into another tutorial on the app game kit in this in this tutorial tutorial or rather series of tutorials I'm going to show you how to make a game where a character will move up and down uh, on, on the uh, um, y-axis and then you'll fire bullets at enemies that are dropping down the screen when the when the bullet hits the enemy that'll cause a collision and uh, you you the, we will score within the game. It's a simple game, but there is concept that once once you you've created mastered, you'll be able to make a lot of different types of games. You can have the characters move in all different directions, and you, you can really sort of run with the idea. So the first thing when you've made your game is, as always, set up your virtual resolution. Um, so I've set up the virtual resolution as 800 by 600. If you don't do this, the game will not run at all. So this, this first line is absolutely essential in the game. The next thing that you need to do is load in your images. So um, I'm going to load in the image of the good guy. Um, the next thing is, is your sounds. Now, as, as I've talked about in previous lessons, you need to have this skeleton or this template set up. So, you got your virtual your virtual resolution, then your images will go under here, and our sounds will go under there. So that that's that's how we, we, we build structure into our game, and we know where everything lay, is laid out. So after we've loaded in, after we've set virtual resolution, we've loaded our image. So we've we put in good guy number one. We we need to set up a variable for that image. So good guy equals one, and what does this do? Well, I'm saying on the X position, set him, X is across, Y is down. I'm saying to set him 10 pixels out from the edge. And I'm saying to move him down 300. So the character will start just 10 pixels out and 300 down the screen. So that sets up the variable for our player. So now, now that we've done that, we need to create the sprite. Obviously, watching this on, on YouTube and at home, or in the classroom, you need to pause the screen, keep pausing and keep typing these in. So we create the sprite, sprite. So we've loaded the image in, we've declared the variable and said where it's going to start. We now tell App Game Kit to actually create that sprite along, along with the parameters that we've set. And now that we've created it, put it on the screen. Put it on the screen as per the instructions that we've set in our variable. So this these two variables need to be the same as these two variable names and obviously we've got good guy and good guy so setting the sprite position on the screen is pretty straightforward then once that's done we're ready to start putting our, our do loop in and the do loop is as always do and it ends in loop um, and then I will put the sync command in to just keep things refreshed. So we've got our do loop. So the next thing we then do in our template is we put in our goal subs. So we've got our structure now, which is loading our images, loading our sounds, creating our variables. And as long as we follow this template and put our goal subs underneath, So, and as long as we add in any goal subs right within our loop, we, we'll be good to go. So I, the next thing I would need to do is create a subroutine for move the player. So as, we, as you know, uh, the goal subs are going to be low here. So that's, the, the sub, that's how we name the subroutine, move player, with the call on there. So that's, that's the name. Now, because we're going to be moving our player up and down, and because at some point we can have a collision, we need to make sure we always know where the last position was so that we can reposition the character within the game. Now, two other games I've shown you how to do movement. So the code is exactly the same. So you could just as easily lift the code out, just remembering to do the variables. The next thing is what key is pressed. Well, 38 is the app arrow. So if get raw keys there, that's the built-in command, and that's the number, 38, which is the app arrow. 
if get draw keys it, if if the up key is pressed then the good guy y position is minus five so up so if you imagine we had a character on number 54 if we were moving him up we'd be decreasing the pixels 53 52 51 so that's why we put minus in we're not having it we, he's only moving up and down so he's not moving across the screen so we don't need to worry about x coordinates in this particular game in our other games we have so if you if if the up key is decreasing if i was on 50 if i was on number 50 and then i press the down key i'm increasing the pixels so that will become plus five and so again i've got this code ready for us to go so as you can see so the raw key state is 40 it's plus five so that takes care of moving our character up and down and then the last thing which is something we always need to do is because we have moved our player so when we initially started our game we we put the player on the screen but we but since putting him on the screen we've got this go sub that moves the player because that go because that go sub moves the player i need to set him back on the screen um, i've explained that before so that should now run what I need to do, or, what, or rather what you need to do at this point is, you've, you've, you've created a new project, you've created a folder to save your project in, and you then, you now have to compile it. Once your code is compiled, you need to make sure that you go to the folder that you made, and in the newly created media folder, you need to copy in the good guy JPEG, and any other JPEGs that we'll be using within our game. So. The game is saved, the variables are all set up, the graphics are in our media folder, so we can now run this game and he should move up and down. And you notice he doesn't move up and down, and just as I ran the game I realised what I hadn't done. And this is why it's good to create the template and have the skeleton. I've created the move player but I haven't added him into my subroutine, so into my loop. So go sub, and it has to be the same name, but it doesn't have the have the colon. Okay, so now compile it again and run it, and it'll definitely work this time. He moves up and down, so I'm pressing the up and down keys, and our player now moves. So. That's the first lesson in our bullet game. That's just setting up the game and moving our player around. In the next lesson, we're gonna go on to actually create the bullet and start to fire the bullet across the screen. Thank you for listening to this lesson.